Hello beautiful people, how's it going? I'm back with another video and as you can see, I'm clearly looking for a death wish. Today we are ranking every Star Wars character based on their character development and of course my opinion, which is why I know you guys are gonna kill me, but it's fine. You know what? I love you guys regardless. If you're new to my channel, hello, we watch things that I've never seen before, so you should subscribe because we are only a thousand subscribers away from 40k. Come on, it's two days away from my birthday. I'm turning 20. Let's make 40k a thing, especially since I can tell that 70% of my audience based on analytics are not subscribed to my channel, so you guys should subscribe if you're not because it's free, why wouldn't you? And of course, if you would like to, you can follow me on Instagram to send me a message and speak to me directly. The link is in the description box below. And of course, if you wanna see uncut movie reactions, you can do so on my Patreon, or if you just wanna support the channel, you can pledge over there. Let's get ranking Star Wars characters. Please don't kill me. Don't kill me, remember, please do not kill me. These are only my opinions. Let's start with Padme, right? Padme over here goes, I think, C tier. Not because I didn't like her character, but because I felt like she didn't have much to do. Obviously, her part in Anakin going mad <laughs> was very interesting. It was a very interesting plot device to use. I thought it was cool, but then again, when I look back at it, not in the Clone Wars, just in the films, she didn't really do much. She was kind of just Anakin's girlfriend and then later wife. So that's pretty much all I feel about her character. Obi-Wan has to go in superior tier because when you think about his character, what his character did, how important it was to the story, he trained Anakin. He was the one who not really turned him to the dark side, more of he was the one who was trying to protect him from it, but he was there for the whole thing. So he was there for the prequels and the original trilogy. And so for that, I have to put him in S tier. Also because I know you guys would kill me if I put him anywhere else. Moving on, Jar Jar Binks. I think a question mark is the perfect way to put him in a tier list. His entire character was a question mark. I was very confused the entire time watching him appear on screen. I know that the actor was severely bullied and even contemplated suicide. That sucks, but I am not directing this at the actor. I'm directing this at George Lucas, who thought this was a good idea. He thought that we would like to see Jar Jar Binks. That's what really confuses me. C-3PO. This is really going to annoy you guys. I would rank C-3PO. No, I'll put him in amazing tier. A tier. Because while he didn't have much to do, he was the one character, him and R2. Where is R2? Where is R2? There he is. Who were in every single Star Wars movie. Correct me if I'm wrong. Even Rogue One. I don't know if they were in Solo, though. I can't remember because I haven't seen Solo ever since I watched it. Because Solo is a horrible movie. Goodness me. It's so bad. It's so bad. And that's an opinion that I will say confidently, whether you guys disagree or not. Solo was an atrocity of a movie. Darth Maul. Here's the thing about Darth Maul. While he was really cool in The Phantom Menace, I know he becomes a prominent character in The Clone Wars, but I haven't reached there with The Clone Wars yet. So at the current state of where I am now, his presence in The Phantom Menace was really cool. He killed Qui-Gon. That was horrible. But as a character, he had no development, especially when you compare him to other villains like Count Dooku or even Grievous or even the greatest of all time, one of the most iconic villains, Darth Vader, which we will get to in a minute. Mace Windu. This might annoy you guys. Mace Windu goes above, <laughs> he goes above Obi-Wan in Superior. And let me tell you why. The whole fact that Samuel L. Jackson told George Lucas that he wants a purple lightsaber and George Lucas said yes which completely defies all canon from what I know, remember I'm still new to this, do not come at me, is honestly quite brilliant. I think it's, I think it's great. Mace, Mace Windu is an amazing character. Every time he even shows up in the Clone Wars, I get excited. And maybe it's because he's played by Samuel L. Jackson and that actor has a special place in my heart because of the, Mar the Marvel Cinematic Universe and Pulp Fiction. So maybe that's why. But I think he is extremely powerful. He's a council member. I'm not sure if that's what they call it, but the council with Yoda, which we will get to later. So I think that's really cool. Count Dooku, to me, 
goes in C tier above Padme. Because while he was a great character, I'm not sure if he lasted for long, I can't really remember now, but he also has a lot to play in the Clone Wars, so I'm kind of, I'm trying my best to look at this in the grander scheme of the Star Wars universe. So I think Count Dooku needs to go, especially above Padme. I wouldn't rank him above any of these others, but definitely Padme and definitely Darth Maul, because as villains, Dooku even had more lines, Darth Maul just never spoke, or at least I don't even remember the way he sounds, and that's saying something. You guys have to remember, some of these Star Wars movies I've only seen once, but it's important to note that the characters who stuck with me stuck with me, and I'm just a regular viewer. Moving on, Chewie. I'm sorry, Chewie has to go in B tier. I was never... I just never really gravitated toward, towards him the way I gravitated towards C-3PO and R2, even though he was a very, he was a constant. I mean, Chewie was a constant, but he was never, he was never a character that I adored, apart from the part where he <laughs> died in The Rise of Skywalker. I mean, I felt that, but then again, Rise of Skywalker, the amount of deaths that didn't end up being deaths was actually hilarious. And I know that's something that annoyed a lot of you. Carrie Fisher's daughter, I mean, she'll go at the top of D tier above Darth Maul. Yep, I definitely think so. I definitely think so. Just also to honor the fact that she was there to honor her mom and she stayed there for the Rise of Skywalker, regardless how you feel about the character, you have to put some respect on her name. And I will stand by that. Moving on, Han Solo in the original films. Now, this, this is really going to annoy you guys. Original films, he goes at the top of A tier, not superior, but wait for it. Han Solo was a character that really needed to grow on me. And I think the only time I really started to like him was in The Force Awakens. And I think that's really interesting because he played that cool guy in the 80s. Do you know what I mean? He played the rebel. He played the character who's unlikable yet so likable. But for me, I just didn't like him, <laughs> which is why I always rooted for Luke and Leia before I found out, which I think is really hilarious. I know you guys still remember that reaction. That is hilarious. So yeah, Han would go at the top of A tier just because he's also a classic character. He is one of the main three, which is why I will also place... Actually, no, we'll get to that later. BB-8, you guys are going to be so mad. <laughs> I'm sorry. Actually, no, no, no. I'll put BB-8 on top of R2, but not above C-3PO, just because C-3PO actually talks. <laughs> and so C-3PO has a lot of good lines. Even in the sequel trilogy, I thought C-3PO's jokes worked really well. But BB-8, as a companion to both Poe and Rey, was really great for me, especially because you guys know how I feel about both Poe and Ray. I thought they were really great. By the way, I'd like to mention to you guys, we're not going to be filling this entire tier list out because there are actually even characters here who I didn't, I don't, I don't even remember. But on that note, Han in Solo, I'll put him above, no, I'll just put him in F. F as in fail. The actor who plays Han tried really hard, but I don't think he hit the mark. I don't know if I felt that way when I first saw the film, but definitely now, as much as I hated that movie, I mean, he, it just wasn't it. It just wasn't it. And maybe if they cast someone who was better at being Han, I would have liked it more. But as of now, no. Finn. He has to go. He has to go on the top of the A tier. He just has to be. Finn is one of the funniest characters in the entire Star Wars universe. And the actor... John Boyega, amazing guy, amazing guy, protesting, just, just doing everything John Boyega should do. I remember, I think a month ago, he said he doesn't even care if he just never gets a role again. He stands for what he believes in, but also the character of Poe, especially in The Force Awakens. I know people feel like they dropped his character arc, which, you know, you guys can, you guys can feel because he definitely did become less significant, especially in The Last Jedi when they, they turned his role into a romance story between him and Rose, which I liked in the beginning, but now when I go back to it, I just feel like it's completely irrelevant. Yeah, Finn has to go up there. 
He's also just very lovable. You can't, you can't, you can't put him anywhere under that. You just can't do it. Anakin's mom, top of B tier above Chewbacca. One of my favorite scenes in the prequels is when young Anakin, where is young Anakin? I know a lot of people gave him so much hate for that role. The poor kid, there he is. The poor kid did not deserve everything the public gave him. So here, we're going to put young Anakin. Oh no, I can't, I can't put him under Dooku, but I can definitely put him here above Padme, which is funny because I, I remember that scene where they met each other. But the scene where... Anakin comes back. Actually, no, before that, the scene when Anakin says goodbye to his mom was so emotional for me. I remember crying to that. I remember the scene very well. I think that's, I thought that was very beautiful and done very well. And there's also props to the actress who played his mom. And then of course, when Anakin goes back in the next movie in Attack of the Clones to see that his mom's dead. Or was that, no, I think that was Revenge of the Sith. Correct me if I'm wrong. I actually think it was Revenge of the Sith. You guys can tell me in the comments. And now that I said that, I know that um, every single one of you is going to comment, okay, <laughs> don't kill me. Yoda. How can you not rank Yoda best of the best? OP, one of the greatest characters of all time. Here's the thing that's interesting about Yoda, which I know not a lot of people feel. Yoda is one of those characters that worked the entire time for me. Yoda as a puppet, animated Yoda for the prequels, and then back to <laughs> puppet Yoda <laughs> for the sequel trilogy. I thought Yoda was just amazing. Some of my favorite lines from the Star Wars universe come from Yoda. They also come from another character too, which I will rank later, which I know is gonna really annoy you guys. But you know what, I'll take the hit. I have to stick by my opinions. But Yoda as a character is, even now is seen as one of the most iconic characters ever seen on screen. Which also brings me to, where is he? Where's the guy? You know we gotta do it. You know we gotta do it. Where is he? There he is, Darth Vader. One of the most iconic villains of all time. And that's something even when I wasn't a fan of Star Wars, I couldn't argue. Darth Vader, the way he looks, the way he sounds, has become such a prominent figure in cinematic history that it would be so disrespectful of me to rank him any less. And I don't feel that way with Han Solo, and I don't feel that way with other characters that we are going to mention. While I do respect the history of cinema, there are also characters that are overrated, and I do believe overrated, for reasons that I still do not know. Which then brings me to... Palpatine. I'm gonna be honest. I'm gonna be very honest. Well, yeah, yeah. I'll rank him above the droids, but not above Finn. <laughs> Just because Finn was such a loving character. And the way they brought Palpatine back, I'm not sure if there's another Palpatine here, because they're they're doing multiple characters, they're, like they're doing future Han and past Han, as you can see over here. But Palpatine, I really had to go with the fact that he just came back to life in the final movie. It didn't ruin the movie for me like it did for a lot of people, but of course, when you look at films like The Crimes of Grindelwald for the Harry Potter series, when you mess around with canon, some fans can't get into it, which is completely respectful. If a fan is built up to believe that a certain thing is the way it is, that Anakin was the one to destroy Palpatine, and then all of a sudden, oh wait, he's back, and Rey's gonna do it. I can see where that stings. But Palpatine in the original trilogy was a character that I liked, but then the more I thought about it, the more I felt that Anakin, Darth Vader, was the character, the villain that I was drawn to. So that detracted from Palpatine's effect because every time Palpatine was on screen, I felt like it diminished the characterization of Darth Vader, that he was working under someone else. At, in the first film, I assumed that Darth was his own villain. It was his own agenda. And so seeing Palpatine kind of ruined it for me. But that's just my opinion. Qui-Gon, you guys are gonna, whew, you guys are gonna flip out. I think Qui-Gon's very loved. And I know I'm not see, saying his name right. At least I don't think I am. At the bottom of B tier, even under Chewie, while I really like Liam Neeson's portrayal of his character, when he died, 
While I was shocked, I didn't really mourn for him. And that's because I wasn't attached to his character. In fact, the character I was more attached to was Obi, which is why Obi goes into S tier. I understand that he was great. I understand that he was very powerful. But to also get taken out by Darth Maul, I mean, you could have chosen a better villain. I would have even preferred it if he was taken out by Count Dooku. And again, I don't think Star Wars is originally from a comic or a book series. Correct me if I'm wrong. So George Lucas decided to have him taken out by Darth Maul. And that just doesn't sit right with me. Moving on. Original Luke. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I'll put him, I know you guys are gonna kill me. Oh, you guys are really gonna kill me for this. At the top of A tier, above Han. <sighs> Please don't kill me for this. Luke was a character that I loved. I really loved, even in the sequels. I thought he was an amazing character to look up to. I thought the fact that he failed and learned how to use the Force, we got to see him fail a lot, so everything felt earned. I remember I said that, which is why you guys thought I was being a hypocrite when I compared him to Rey, because I actually liked Rey. Again, we will talk about her later, so you guys can kill me in the end, not now. I just don't like the way Mark Hamill speaks in the original films. You guys are going to kill me for this. I understand that it's an 80s movie. I understand that you have to respect it. I respect these movies with all my heart. But I, I've been holding this in for so long. The way George Lucas directed him to say, what? I can't be a Jedi. It just didn't work. It just didn't work for me, and that's the honest truth. His acting in the very first film was not the greatest thing in the world, and I have to be honest. And in fact, sometimes I even like sequel. <laughs> I even like sequel Luke Skywalker. Where is he? Where's later Mark Hamill? Yup, I like sequel Mark Hamill better than original Mark Ham Hamill, better than Luke Skywalker, even when he was mad, even when he threw his lightsaber away in The Last Jedi. It worked for me. He is a man who's been through a lot, who eventually just lost it. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't think it was that big of a problem. And I didn't feel like they were disrespecting his character. I don't feel that way at all. It feels like a natural progression. But that's just my opinion. Again, please don't kill me. I loved Luke. I did. I have a Funko Pop. I have a Funko Pop of Luke right up there. I am not hateful towards his character, but I do think some characters are better. And I'm gonna be honest because this is my tier ranking. Moving on. Who are we gonna choose next? I don't wanna do all of the big characters in the beginning because of obviously I want you guys to stay around for this video. Gwendolyn and Christie as this character, I'm gonna be honest. Bottom of D tier. Genuinely, genuinely. Actually, you know what? No, 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 no. Just the question mark tier. I didn't understand what the point of her character was. They built her up to be such a menacing villain, and then she just gets taken out, and then she comes back again and gets taken out again. I genuinely do not even know. Oh, Phasma. That's her character name. Phasma. I remember that. Was it Phasma? No, yeah, yeah, I think it was. Her Funko Pop is really cool, though, because she's metallic. I even considered buying her. But then again, the character was just so ho horrible. Laura Dern. Bottom of C tier, and let me tell you why. Not only is Laura Dern an amazing actress, her hair, super cool, but she was a villain who didn't really turn out to be a villain who sacrificed herself to give us one of the best, and I know you guys don't like The Last Jedi, but one of the best visual scenes in any of the Star Wars movies we've ever gotten. You can't deny it. That entire scene when all of the ships just split in half is some of the best visual cinema I've ever seen in my entire life. You guys remember my reaction. Go see that again. That was a shocker. Beautiful. She sacrificed herself. It was amazing. K2SO. I hate to do it to him, but I gotta do it to him above. <laughs> above Palpatine. Rogue One is still one of my favorite Star Wars films, mainly, not mainly, but also primarily because of K2SO, one of the funniest droids, one of the best written droids in the entire Star Wars saga. He is so funny because he's sarcastic. He kind of 
is the opposite of C-3PO, where C-3PO sometimes is just dumb and doesn't have social skills and doesn't know when to speak. K-2SO is a genius. Is a genius. I've only seen that movie twice and I still remember his name. That is saying something. Just an amazing character and just the way he died was so beautiful. Rogue One in general, just the way everybody in that film died for bettering the world, for taking the world to new heights, for making sure that Leia got the message, got the plans to the Death Star. Unbelievable. In fact, where is she? Where is our queen? Because I don't see her. Don't tell me Jin isn't on this list. I am no I'm literally going to quit if Jin is not on this list. Well, I don't know if I'll quit. But still, there she is, Jen Ursa. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Amazing story, bottom of superior tier. I know, I know. I ranked her above Luke, I know. The entire idea of Rogue One was something that took me by surprise. And one of the reasons the film worked is because I really felt for Jen's character. The whole story about her dad, how she felt like that guy, I can't remember his name, left her. I thought that was really great. And I really loved her dad, if I can find him on this list. If he's even on this list, there he is. He goes at the bottom of B tier. The whole idea, the whole concept of him creating a weakness in the Death Star to ideally save humanity, if anyone got the idea, was amazing. In fact, I'll even put him... Actually, yeah, he goes at the top of B tier, definitely. Definitely his sacrifice to devoting his life to creating a literal machine that can kill planets and then placing a tiny weakness. That was something that Disney did right with Star Wars. They fixed a huge plot hole in the original Star Wars movies. And if you don't agree with Disney on that point, I'm sorry, but you're wrong. You're entitled to your own opinion, but you're wrong. Go ahead, kill me in the comments. <laughs> Now, should we do it? I know you guys are going to be mad. I don't know if I should. You know what? Let's just do it. Original Leia. Yes. Yeah, I said it. Above Luke Skywalker. Leia was, in my mind, another iconic figure in cinema. Her hair was something girls probably in the 80s learned how to do. Her silhouette is something I still see to this day in poster stores. She is the iconic Star Wars character. It's not Luke, it's Leia. It's Leia and Darth Vader and Yoda, and you cannot deny it. Also, Carrie Fisher, honor this woman. Honor this woman who passed away, a absolute queen. And yes, I'm doing it. I am putting Leia, actually no. Leia at the, bottom of, at the bottom of A tier better than Luke. Yep, I even put adult Leia. <laughs> you guys are gonna kill me. I even put adult Leia above original Luke and original Han, which then leads me to, I have to do it to him. I have to give it to him. Where is he? I know he's here because I saw him just now. The love of my life, new Han Solo. Sequel Han Solo goes under Jyn Ursa and above original Leia. This was the Han Solo that I fell in love with right before he passed away. That broke my heart. Seeing Han in The Force Awakens finally believe in the Force, believe that it's real, take one of my favorite characters of anything of all time, Rey, under his wing, was beautiful to me. I loved it. I absolutely adored his character, and I think the way he died was so good. It was so good. I just really loved this man. And I cried for him. Harrison Ford's portrayal of Han in the future, well, present Han, if we think about it logically, was amazing to the point where he was a character that I disliked who turned into someone that I adored. And that's primarily due to Harrison Ford's portrayal. Speaking of Harrison Ford, and Carrie Fisher, their son. I know this is this is gonna drive you guys. I mean, I don't know how you guys are gonna feel about this. I'm so sorry. I know, even I'm surprised. Kylo Ren or Ben Solo, whichever one you want. 
to choose. One of the greatest villains of all time. Because his redemption arc meant more to me than Darth Vader's did. Let me tell you why. Maybe when I'm a father, I will feel differently. But right now, being a son who loves his dad, who sometimes gets mad. I'm talking about me, not him. He's a deer. I can relate to Kylo Ren. He is the character that I can relate to the most. We all get mad at our parents sometimes, even though we love them to death. And sometimes we make huge mistakes, huge mistakes. I really, really felt for Kylo's character development. Him being a parent, him being a child who sometimes you feel like just wants to spite his parents even though they did nothing wrong to him. I felt solace in his character. I felt solace in his character. The way he ended by killing the version of himself who was Satan, who was a horrible person, so he can redeem himself to his dad and to his mom. I thought that was amazing. I thought Leia using the force too much to the point where she died just to contact him to make sure he doesn't fully turn to the dark side, the sacrifice that a mother has to make, leaves Kylo at the top of Superior. The only character that I cannot even put myself to put him above is Yoda. I just couldn't do it. But honestly, also Adam Driver as Kylo Ren is just beautiful. Just beautiful. One of the best performances in all of Star Wars. And you cannot disagree. And if you do, once again, I'm sorry, but your opinion is wrong. Goodness. Goodness. I mean, wow. Adam Driver as Kylo Ren. You can't tell me anything. You can't tell me anything. You cannot. <laughs> all right. We're probably going to have to. No, no, we won't. Boba Fett. Genuinely. Not, no, not as big as, nah, 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 nah. Bottom of question mark. I hated this guy. I absolutely hated him. He just annoyed me. And that entire scene of Return of the Jedi at the very end, when he was just, he captured everyone. And then they, they added in that new dance sequence where they had a song playing. The entire thing was a big question mark. Hated it, hated it, hated it. <laughs> it was horrible. It was actually, actually, actually horrible. By the way, do we not have an Ahsoka in this? I guess we don't have an Ahsoka, which is interesting. I'm assuming this is just movies. Babu Frick, <laughs> adorable. This guy is adorable. Babu Frick goes at the bottom of D tier. He doesn't really have a lot to do, but I have a Funko Pop of him right up there. Yep, as you can see, no, he's right up there. Yeah, really, really adorable. He didn't have much to do or much to say, but he was really cool and I liked him. Here we go. Here we go. I know you guys are going to be mad. You guys are going to be so mad. Young Anakin. Top of B tier. Yep, this is it. This is the part where everywhere everyone clicks off. Clone Wars Anakin slightly annoys me. Prequel Anakin doesn't annoy me. I am invested in his character. But I just couldn't root for him especially in the last film, went absolutely berserk for no apparent reason. Correct me if I'm wrong. No apparent reason, in my opinion. Goodness, Anakin was a whole situation. Anakin was a whole situation. Especially the way he treated Padme in the end. The way he treated Obi-Wan in the end. Nothing about his character arc was justifiable. He had, he had an amazing turn. Kind of reminds me of Daenerys' turn. <laughs> But it just, it just didn't work for me. It just didn't work. No, nit, 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 no, did not work. <laughs> hey, Mitch from the Hunger Games, bottom of F tier. I didn't even understand what his character was doing in Solo for half of the time. All right, this is really gonna annoy you guys. Snoke, Snokey Snoke. I'm sorry, the throne room scene was iconic. It was, you have to give it, you have to give it to him. The, the throne room scene was absolutely great. 
I loved it. Regardless of it makes sense, if it makes sense or not, if you guys feel like some of the storm, the red stormtroopers were just waiting for their turn to fight, I don't care. It was cinematic brilliance. It was it, it was it was a visual orgasm. I'm sorry, I just had to say it. It was a visual orgasm. I literally saw that thing and I was like, oh wow. So nah. The way Snoke went out was really sick. The way Kylo just turned the saber next to him and slashed him in half. I thought that was so cool. You gotta admit it. You gotta admit it. It was amazing. I think there's someone here that I just saw that I got really excited about. Yeah, I think it was Poe. Where's Poe? Not Kung Fu Panda Poe. <laughs> even though he would go in S tier, even in this ranking. <laughs> Where is he? Where is this guy? Where is Poe? Did I already rank Poe? No way I did. No, I didn't speak about him. Which is why I really want to right now. I just I just really miss this character. Guys, it's actually killing me that I can't find him. It's really killing me. Where is Poe? Where is Poe? Wait, let's do Rose. Bottom of F tier. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The actress is amazing. I know she got bullied a lot for this too, which I think is completely unacceptable. You guys shouldn't do that. Sometimes Star Wars fans can be hideous people. Goodness. Can you guys be nice for once? For once. <laughs> I do love you guys though. This Asian guy from The Force Awakens, not The Force Awakens, Rogue One, sorry, goes at the bottom of B tier. The way he handled the staff was amazing. Honestly, honestly, so iconic. So iconic. Original C-3PO? I don't know, bottom of D tier? He didn't really have much to do. Daenerys Targaryen's character. At the end, she was working with Darth Maul, so I'll put her up here. Amelia Clark is an amazing actress, so I'll give her that. But the twist that she was on the dark side, I saw that coming. I think I saw that coming. I can't even remember now. There is Poe! I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know. I know. You guys can just shoot me right now. Come on. Come on. One of the most comedic characters. I really liked the conflict in the very beginning of The Rise of Skywalker, where he says, we need you, Rey, and you're over here training. Training for what? I thought that was really good. Then contrasted with the amazing comedy. I mean, that, I mean, The Force awake, Awakens, I still remember that line where he says, so who gets to talk first, you or me, whatever. <laughs> it was so funny. Poe has to go up there. Every time he came on screen, I was happy. You guys need to remember that I am, well, I am ranking this not only by character arcs, of course, but also how I personally feel about these characters. If I didn't get excited when you got on screen, then I'm not going to rank you at the top. Even if you were an amazingly developed character, if you made me bored, then it goes into it. And that is something both Finn and Poe did not do. Okay. I'm ready. I'm ready to be murdered. I am ready to be murdered. I have to be true to myself. I swore an oath to myself when I was a child that I was going to stay true to myself, that if I ever made a YouTube channel, I wouldn't lie. So here we go. If you guys loved me, you won't make me kill myself by reading your horrible comments. I understand she is an OP character. I understand that we did not get to see her training the way we saw Luke's training. However, Rey, to me, was a character that I immediately resonated with because she was kind as soon as she wasn't willing to trade BB-8 for food. She was starving. I knew that she was going to be a favorite of mine, and I said that in my reaction, and she still is. Every time I see a poster of Rey Skywalker, yep, yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh, Rey Skywalker, I get so emotional. And that's because Daisy Ridley is an amazing actress who portrayed that role so amazingly that I needed to put her up there. I just needed to. And that's the truth of the matter. Does her entire story make perfect, perfect sense like Luke does? 
Maybe not. But it was a character that I resonated to more than Luke. That is what you guys need to understand. As a human being, I felt more love for that character. I don't care that she wasn't in the original trilogy. I don't care that Luke was the OG. I respect the original trilogy. I respect that they are the classic Star Wars movies. But as a 20, well, I'm 19, but I'm turning 20 in two days. <laughs> Happy early birthday. Now is the perfect time to release this video. I have to be true to myself and I have to be honest. If I enjoyed her character more, doesn't mean that I'm a less Star Wars fan than you are. It really doesn't. And if you think that way, then goodness, I feel sorry for you. I am so sorry. To round off the list, again, we're not going to rank everyone here. We're not going to do that. By the way, there's no Porgs on here, which I just noticed. Kind of upsetting. <laughs> Original Palpatine in the prequels. Bottom of B tier. And then there are, some, there are some here that I need to, need to, need to. Oh, wow. Mandalorian characters aren't on this. That's really upsetting. I would have loved to rank them. I would have loved, 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 loved to rank them. Who else are we going to rank? Who else are we going to rank? It's really bad that I don't remember his name. It actually really sucks that I don't remember his name. But even Childish Gambino playing him in Rogue One, not Rogue One, Solo, was just stale for me as much as I love Childish Gambino and his music. So that was actually very surprising. And then finally, over here, there's one more that I knew I wanted to. Boba Fett goes atop of both of his portrayals. Where's his third portrayal? Yeah, his third portrayal was my favorite. Definitely. Sequel version. Lando! His name was Lando! That's his name, Lando. All of the portrayals of Lando go at the top of C tier. I just never gravitated towards his character, really. Not really. And then I know there's one more that we have to do. I know there's one or two more that just need to be put in the ranking. Just needed to be. <laughs> the spy, bottom of F tier. This guy that I didn't really care about, bottom of D tier. I thought that was hilarious. Actually, you know what? No, no, no. Bottom of D tier for him because that scene where Poe was messing with him. <laughs> where it was like, what? I want to talk to the Supreme Leader or whatever. That was really cool. I think that was The Last Jedi. Yeah, that was really great. Boba Fett's son. Bottom of, no. Yeah, bottom of F tier. I just, actually, you know, question mark. I just didn't really see. I mean, he was in Attack of the Clones. I remember that. He just wasn't really, mm. <laughs> Kira Knightley, bottom of D tier. She just didn't really, didn't really have much to do. And I think that's pretty much everyone I can. Oh, Grievous! Grievous. <laughs> the last straw for you guys. The last straw to kill me. Bottom of C tier, just so you guys don't murder me. I was going to put him at the top of D, but no, no. Bottom of C. He was an interesting villain. He has a lot to play in the Clone Wars. So yeah, honestly, I think that's pretty much all I have to say. These are the Star Wars characters that I really gravitated towards. Everyone else on this tier list is just someone who I didn't really invest in too much. I can see, oh goodness, have to give props. Oh wow, there's an old Obi. No, 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 no. Old Obi would go, nah, 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 nah. Under Palpatine, no, I can't put him, yeah. Nah, nah, he, no, old Obi goes at the bottom of the A tier, but obviously he has to be in the A tier, obviously, of course. And then this guy from the prequels who was also in Rogue One, he sent Luke and Leia away. So I guess, I guess he'll go over here under Padme, yeah. And then there was Luke's uncle and aunt, bottom of D tier. They didn't really have much to do. And he was annoying to Luke, so that really irritated me. Yeah, I think that's pretty much all of the people that I have to speak about. There are some Rose, Rogue One characters over here, but I'll just put them at the bottom of C. Because while they were great characters, I cried for them all. I just wasn't that attached to them. I know there's another, yeah. 
I just wasn't that attached to them. Even this guy. Oh no, this guy, no, this guy was from The Last Jedi. No, bottom of D tier. Not bottom, but yeah. All right, you guys, I think that's pretty much it. Oh, Rogue One. Yep, oh, more Rogue One. It's actually killing me. Yep, I think that's pretty much it. All right, so that was my Star Wars tier list character ranking. Do not kill me in the comments. I'm begging you, these are just my opinions. You don't need to get mad. We are all a part of the same fandom and we all resonate with the movies in different ways. So thank you guys so much for watching Indiana Jones tomorrow because it's Saturday. You know how it goes. So thank you so much for watching. I love you guys so much and I'll see you next time. Bye guys.